board now to let Brilliant. Excellent. So weekly moment, here we are at the Leadership Roundtable and we're here today to talk about culture or community. You know, is it a chicken and egg malarkey? What do we need to be thinking about? And perhaps are we at a stage now where we just need to ditch culture altogether and think about focusing on something which is a lot more valuable to us in modern business and that is community who knows i wonder how you're going to feel at the end of today's 45 minutes so let's crack on with today's agenda um love this quote the best businesses don't push culture they build community you know and i think you know as soon as you look at that quote there's just something about that I don't know what environment you're in, but how often do we hear this? This is the culture that we we need. This is, you know, it's kind of, it very much is this push of, we need to be this culture. We have to, you know, um, foster this culture. This is what we're building in terms of the culture that we that we want. And, um, and you know, that falls short in, in its success so often. And of course, I work in the world of transformation and I can tell you from my experience that I'm not sure I have seen in, you know, singularly a successful culture shift because the very idea of culture is so incredibly complex, um, very, very complex indeed, because when we think about culture, there's some things that we probably want to be, I guess, mindful of, actually really mindful of you know when you think about culture you think about tribes in a culture how cultures exist how cultures form more often than not culture is unified by a common set of rules or rituals and we find that a lot you know in terms of our own heritage you know in terms of our own society uh, societal cultural um, uh, background etc and also when people are a part of a culture you can often get people saying things like this well it's the way we do things around here and for those of us that work in the world of transformation and we're trying to bring people on the journey with us how many times have you gone into a team or a department and they've gone oh but this is the way we do things around here you know what are you doing knocking on my door so it's really 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 interesting so there's a set of a established unification as part of culture the other thing as well is you know culture can actually go a little bit on the other side of the spectrum it can border on being quite cultish and if we're thinking about subcultures within an organization I don't know whether you've experienced this or not or whether you've got your own story but some people can almost become cultish and create a silo of the subculture that they are they that they formed without even realizing it themselves you know and sometimes I you know when I'm working with customers and they say oh we've got to break down the silos I'm thinking is it a silo you're breaking down or is it a culture that's kind of gone a little bit into that kind of cult environment where it's like this is us and we're going to stick together and we're going to be territorial and we're going to hang on to everything that we can in terms of our content and in terms of our own culture um and you know you see that all over our corporate systems and of course the final bit is we really really should be conscious of the fact that culture is not a single thing <laughs> you know it just isn't it just isn't and nobody needs a phd to understand that subcultures exist everywhere you know it's just it, the the water cooler moment the, the the group that go to the pub on the friday night the ladies that have a lunch on on the third thursday of the month these are all potential subcultures that are existing within our corporate environments. So the other thing as well is just not necessarily to just, you know, get people in what our culture should be, what we want our culture to be as singularity. It's just not real. So what happens when we think about community? Well, when we think about community, something a little bit different happens. There is this sense that we're united to something that's common and more often than not bigger than us. 
we have shared experience, but there's freedom to be who we are. There's belonging, and I feel that I belong to this community, but the doors aren't closed because anybody could belong to this community. And that sense of inclusiveness is just a little bit more real. And the other thing as well about community, which is quite an interesting thing, is that if we think about a community as an ecosystem, it's constantly kind of, you know, it can scale, it can grow, but it can also constrict and contract and grow and it's fluid. It's an ecosystem. As long as we've got these, um, these um, aforementioned things that are happening. So I don't know about you, but I kind of look at that and I just think, oh, I feel a little bit more relaxed about community. <laughs> you know, when I saw everything earlier on about culture, I'm kind of like a little bit, oh. And I have myself been part of a toxic subculture within an organization that, that to the world is an amazing, healthy, single culture. So very, 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 very interesting. So there's something else as well. Um, I, I um, look, look at this, the, the Blackpool Grand Hotel. Can you believe it? The theater, the Grand Theater in Blackpool. If you look on their website, they have got a fantastic article that talks about culture and community. And what they say is that in their observation, in their work with the community, what they've noticed is that culture is a reflection of the community or the society. So if we focus in on community, we make a community as healthy and as strong as it can be, then as a result, whatever culture will naturally evolve has got a better chance of being healthy because we're focusing in on a good, strong sense of community. So maybe it is community that we focus on in order for whatever culture to emerge as a result of that to be reflected in a healthy way. Interesting. So what I want to do is I want to just take everybody through the, these four elements, and it's quite interesting actually, Kim, because number two here, we've just been talking about in a previous conversation, even though it's a completely different subject, but it's great. So if we were hypothetically to agree that focusing in on community is a lot healthier and a lot more valuable for humanizing transformation in order for the naturalness of cultures and subcultures to emerge and have a really good chance of growing as, he as healthy as possible, then what would that look like? And what I wanna do is I just wanna take everybody through these four very, very simple things. Now the, the, the point three and point four are part of a method that we have, which is called the community index um, assessment. And it's fabulous because you can use it to assess, you can use it to design, you can use it to just have good conversations with people and make decisions around transformation. So the first one, very, very simple, is instead of unifying people, what we want to do is we want people to unite and unite against something that is bigger than us. Because if we can do that, then what that means is everybody has got something bigger than them that gives them that first foundational point of I belong here because I'm, I'm connected to the purpose that is the same purpose that you're connected to. Purpose is having a lot of bad press at the moment. I don't know whether you noticed that or not. And there's a lot of people, certainly on LinkedIn, that are talking about, you know, it's a bit of a misnomer. We need to just, you know, everybody's gone purpose mad. And actually, you know, what that, what that does is overcomplicate things. And I would absolutely challenge that. I would, I would challenge that and I would argue that. I think that if we are in any form of change or transformation, getting people to unite on something bigger than them, be that purpose or not, it's going to be purposeful, is super important. So I don't know how anybody could argue 
that uniting people on something that is bigger than them that is purposeful you know is 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 not is not helpful to to transformation and certainly a foundational point of 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 building community so very 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 important for us so it doesn't have to be the big purpose it can be being purposeful about something so we can use different techniques there and um and the key thing is are we united on it and this is something else that is really interesting you can be united on something but not necessarily agree with it but we're united on that purpose here and now for this thing we're going to get it done we're united we're going to build community around that and we're, we're, we're going to focus on that and we're going to travel that pathway. This isn't about getting people to all say yes, but are we united on that purposeful journey? And that's what's so important. So there's a sense here that you don't want people to conform to a, we're not going to move forward until we've got 100 people saying yes to this. We want people to absolutely commit to this. Not necessarily so, but are we purposefully united on the pathway? And that was that's very, very important. So, you know, it's really about do you want to put a man on the moon or not? Right. And um, and and do, do you do we want to put a man on the moon? Um, what are we trying to achieve here that's bigger than us? And can we agree that? And Aaron, thinking about some of your work, potentially, you know, it might be specific to technology, it might be specific to even emerging technology, but to understand what is purposeful about that technology to the system and the future of the system can unite anybody you know, even from education, from health and social care. So super important. And we're not taught this stuff, are we? You know, we're taught to understand the intricacies and the value and the, you know, and building business cases for technology or change or leadership, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we're not taught this stuff. We're not really taught about purpose and being purposeful and what does it mean to understand and unite on something that's bigger than us. And yet, that is really one of the foundational points of helping build a healthy community. Which brings me to the second element of today, and it is identity. And when I'm talking about identity, I'm talking about who we are and not necessarily what we do. And we call this Y time. We actually had a community at the beginning of COVID. And um, when there was an awful lot of people that were losing their jobs, we created a um, Finding Why community. And we had people from all over the world join the community just to find their why. Who am I? And we helped people to find their why and then, you know, career change, career transition, get, get into entrepreneurship or even just recognize that what they've been doing for the last 20 years is truly what they love. And they have renewed vigor to get back into that, that, that work. So really understanding who we are and our identity is really important. I guess the key thing here is, is ensuring that everybody has the opportunity and permission to do so. And usually when we're in a change and transformation, when we're trying to humanize transformation, this isn't this stuff is luxury. You know, this stuff is real luxury. And at best, you're probably doing it on your own time, as opposed to within the, you know, within the hours of, of work. And what we should be doing is we should be thinking, how do we ensure that everybody understands that they have the permission to find who they are and explore who they are, and that we want to hear about that as well. So this one's really important for us to recognize um, identity. There's different ways that we can do it. And we have this as a little smile on Kim's face. Um, we have a, um, a worksheet, which is called a brand triangle. And the first, very first exercise of that brand triangle is really you getting to understand a little bit of who you are. And we've got these three columns. So the first column is a very, very simple 360. All we're doing is we are going out to people that um, know us 
professionally and personally, because again, you know, the authenticity of who we are in our personal life as well as who we are in our professional life is really important. We don't want to, you know, get up to the front door of our work, be that physical or digital and don the armor of work. <gasps> to protect who we really are before we kind of head through the front door. We want to celebrate our authenticity. So we need to understand how others perceive us. And we need to understand how others perceive us in our personal life as well as in our professional life. So going out to a few people and just asking them, what are the, some of the core human qualities and strengths that I display as a modern leader? Can you share them with me? Or a human being, can you share them with me? I'm getting those down there. The second thing is to understand that we have our own origin story, our experience and our expertise. Everything that we've done and experienced, everything that we've learned and become an expert in um, is relevant. Experience and expertise. What's our origin story? Where are we today in terms of that? It's kind of like a comet, isn't it? It's kind of the tail of a comet. What is that? What does that look like for you in terms of experience and in terms of expertise? Because that is a reflection of who you are. And then finally, it's where we start to think about what is uniquely me. And this more often than not is more aligned to you as a human being and potentially in your personal life. So we're looking at two elements. We're looking at a micro element, which are the, ha the, the habits, the hobbies, the you know, things that you love, uh, whether it's reading or gardening or going to the beach with your dog every morning. It's the tiny little things that give you pleasure in life. That's the micro bit that you want in here. But also what we want to do is understand what are the values? What do I stand for? Where is my zero tolerance? in life, in business, in work? What, am I, what do I want to leave as a legacy to make an impact on the world, if at all that is how you're thinking? So it's just popping those uniquenesses in there. These three things alone can just help people to really start to tap into who, they, who, who is their why, you know, who am I? And there's loads of different techniques, but this is a really good one. And really important for us to think, you know, if you've got colleagues, if you're working in a team at the moment, have you had and done this exercise together as a team? And I think it would be amazing if you did, because it will allow you to understand each other at a deeper level. And then the next two things, point three and point four, that I wanted to talk about today are here. Um, the sense of feeling good and being connected. Now, Feeling good and being connected really is at the crux of what community is all about. And it might sound like a little bit of a kind of like, you know, uh, 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 the, letting the air out of a balloon. Ooh, Mel, I thought there was going to be this really, really cool reveal, you know, and you just said feeling good. What about great and being connected? You know, isn't it about something bigger than that? But actually, it's not. <laughs> it's really not. If you feel good if you are connected I can guarantee you have a sense of being part of a community it's got nothing to do with culture you just feel good with the work and the people that you're with you are connected to the work and the people that you're with in a purposeful way so feeling good and being connected, super, super important. They might feel so diminutive and lack in any melodrama or any cool aid, but they are so important. So my question to you is, how good are you feeling and how connected do you think you are currently? Because that will instantly give you a sense of belonging to a community. So these two elements for us break down into what's called a community index assessment. And this is something really cool that we use with people. So essentially, if you want to work with a team or in the design of your, 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 your transformation projects or programs, get a sense of community, then this is something that you can do. And it's a great little exercise because what it is, is it's less about those kind of, you know, index assessments, 
deployment, you know, and it's lots and lots and lots of zero and one data. This is conversational data. Yeah, this is this is feeling and uh, energy and emotional data. This is human data. So that's why this is so good to um, lean into. So basically, there is two very, very simple axes. There is a low and a high axis for being connected. And there's a low and a high axis for feeling good. And really what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to see how many people, or indeed, if we can design a, a sense of community that we've got everybody clustered on the top right-hand corner here. So to begin with, what we wanna do is we wanna see where everybody is at. So being connected and feeling good for us split into some subcategories. So being connected splits up into three elements. I feel a sense of belonging here. I feel that I belong here. Now, when I do this exercise with teams, I can tell you we barely get beyond that because all of a sudden the emotion of not really feeling that people belong where they are starts to emerge and we start to talk about it. It is incredible how many people just don't feel that they belong where they are. So how much of a sense of belonging do you have? Does that feel low for you? Does it feel high for you? The second one is about care and compassion. Do you feel that you are supported by the system in terms of care and compassion? And do you feel or can you evidence that you yourself offer support to others? So are you supported by others and the system? Do you offer support to others and the system? It's a two-way street. Um, it's really important. And one goes kind of hand in hand with the other, because a lot of the time when you do not feel supported by others, you have got a sense of vulnerability that you don't even, you, you can't support because you don't know what's going to happen you don't know what's going to what's going to turn out for you so it's really important to you know first and foremost be supported in order for you to be able to offer support out to others and then the third thing is just an ju just thinking about that sense of being networked and what i mean by being networked is ca can you access who you need to access and what you need to access to do the best and be the best that you can be. And that can be technology, it can be data, it can be humans, but are you networked? You know, do you have three levels of, you know, um, bureaucracy that you actually don't have access to what you need, or be that a human or be that data or be that a technology? So how networked are you? How well access, you know, how well is it that you have the access? And we all should have the access that we need in terms of human data and technology. Those three subcategories, wow. I mean, like you can do, you can do a whole transformation program just on those three, couldn't you? I mean, it's just like, you know, that, that sense of being connected. But feeling good is, is equally as important. This is where psychological safety comes into play. This is where peak performance comes into play. This is where success comes into play, um, because when I'm feeling good, what we have found in our work is we can say these three things. I am able to achieve success in my role. My value is both seen, understood and recognized. And I feel safe, which means that I can risk, which means that I can experiment, which means that it's okay if it doesn't go quite right because I feel safe. So you might feel good, but not answer yes to those three questions that I would therefore argue, do you really feel good? You know, do you really feel good? So these are the three elements um, for feeling good and the three elements subcategories for being connected. And we work with individuals and teams on this community index assessment, getting people to talk about these things. 
And, you know, really important to think about the design thinking double diamond. When we're doing work like this, when there is a psychological safety, when there is emotion and when there is energy about the conversations that we're wanting with human beings, it's always important for us to start conversations with individual reflection and then paired conversation before we enter into group discussion and group share and then we go back as a result of that how are you feeling individual reflection and then paired discussion always when you're working with emotion or energy is the following that double diamond of personal reflection paired conversation then open it out to the single and then bring it back and as a result of what we've shared collectively, what does that potentially mean um, individually reflect and then paired discussion. Really important for us to do that. And that's exactly how we approach um, this community index um, measure when we're working with teams around this area. And, you know, I guess I think it's just, you know, a, a reflection now for everybody is is you know asking you this question can you imagine visualize how healthy and vibrant a team would be if they were able to say yes to these six things i mean it's kind of like wow you know the challenge of transformation suddenly becomes no challenge whatsoever it becomes something really, really important because we've humanized it. Yeah, we have recognized the individual as a human and not as a label. So this sense of community, I think, is incredibly powerful. If you'd like to know a little bit more about that, we also have a mural um, work sheet that you can use with teams. So if you want to, you know, if you want to work on it with a team, if you want to have a go and maybe just with a couple of colleagues, then, you know, just let me know and um, I will send you uh, access, a visitor's access to that mural. And then you can go through the, um, the you can go through the workshop with that team. No problem whatsoever. Um, I wanted also because, you know, the, the, the question is potentially, oh, Mel, all that stuff is so cool. But seriously, it's not real. You know, it's not real. It doesn't happen. You know, we can try, but forget it, mate. <laughs> but actually, it is emerging more and more where this sense of focusing in on community rather than culture is really starting to foster vibrancy vibrancy and success and scale and all of this beautiful stuff um, in organizations and it would be absolute remiss of me not to mention Patagonia as one of the exemplar organizations they believe in community they believe in community internally as an organization they believe in community externally as a planet and they are focused on that and every single individual within the Patagonia corporate environment is united in being purposeful toward the planet everybody has got the opportunity to explore who they are their why time their personal why time so much so i don't know whether it's real or not but it has been said that the main headquarters of Patagonia is on a cliff edge and it's overlooking a really amazing surf. And when the surf is out, every single employee can pick up their surfboard and off they go. How cool is that? Um, personal vibes, uh, sorry, good vibes is another key element. Where are we having fun? You know, where are we creating the good vibe of recognizing we're a bunch of humans? You know, we we don't become robots when we work, when we enter into the work environment. You don't, we don't need to do that anymore. This is not the industrial age that we're living in anymore. So we can have good vibes together. We can have, you know, we can and we should and we shouldn't feel guilty for that because it can support feeling good. As well as that sense of connectedness. And I think, you know, there is. A, an element of the connectedness which re recognizes the being purposeful as well as the three sub points that I, I raised earlier on. 
our framework, the Dylan Way, um, is, is basically built on the foundation of three tenets. And if you think about everything that I've just mentioned, and certainly when you look at Patagonia as an organization, I can say to you that they are digitally transforming. They have really good evidence of role model leadership. You can see that. Look at what happened recently with the CEO. Humanity and community is front and center of this organization. And their commitment to regenerative practices within the organization, within their product and service roadmap is exemplar to ethical practice, as well as sustainability, um, awareness and actions. They, these guys are oozing these. They have absolutely breathed life into these three tenets. And as a result, they are so successful. And they've got that sense of community that they're fostering within an employee environment. And I think one of the things about Patagonia for me, which is really cool, is this. You genuinely hear the stories of feeling good and being connected at an employee level. Whereas a lot of the time, I don't know about you, but, you know, you think about um, some of the other big, maybe big tech giants you can hear a lot of marketing stories out there that talk to great employee experiences. But then what you see underneath the hood is potentially something a little bit different because the employees are so driven to do and to deliver and to achieve res organizational results as opposed to human results and success. So um, that's why I like the Patagonia example. Um, Today is a public we webinar, so just uh, for everybody's purpose, I just want to just take a couple of minutes and just, you know, extend that idea of um, the three tenets into helping you to understand that those three tenets are part of something bigger themselves. They're part of a, a framework and approach called the Dylan Way. And that framework and approach is based on those three tenets, but it has profiles, it has seven mindsets of modern business and modern leadership. It has 10 principles of practice and it has over 150 plus practice indicators. That mean that if we're working in change and transformation, we can use the Dylan Way to uh, you know, bring and customize techniques just to support the human condition within our change and transformation. Um, and that is what the, 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 the Dylan Way framework is all about. So um, everybody has the opportunity of uh, going through a strategy session with myself. And that strategy session is just an hour, confidential, you and me. We talk about now, we talk about the future, we talk a little bit of how we might get you from now to there, and then just see whether some of this might be relevant to you. And, um, and that's really all that strategy session is, but um, absolutely no commitments whatsoever. So if you'd like to know a little bit more about that, then just DM me or send me an email and that will be fantastic. But summary, summary on today. Um, I genuinely believe that we need to ditch culture you know it is getting our knickers in a twist when it comes to successful change and transformation culture is something that self-evolves culture is something that we should not try and command and control but if we focus on fostering a healthy community that feels and is connected then we are giving that self-evolution of culture the best chance it possibly has of growing healthy itself. And that's so important for me. Community is so much more expansive. It's also inclusive. Um, it's important that we recognize that for community, we can focus more on being united rather than unifying everybody into an echo chamber. You know, we don't want everybody to be saying this is the way we do things right here. We're not robots. We're not clones. We are uniquely individual. So let's unite rather than unify. Um, to build in that why time for yourself as well as each other, to encourage and to work with your colleagues and your peers to just check in with them and just see whether they've have they spent any time on themselves this week? 
you know, it's our part of that responsibility, that support element within the um, community index. And setting the right conditions for people to feel good. But in order for us to set the right conditions for people to feel good, we need to observe, we need to care, we need to talk to them, we need to connect with them. Um, and that is the final piece for me, really, is that sense of belonging. Because if people genuinely feel that they belong, because there is that care and compassion, their voice is being heard, they can succeed, they it's okay if things don't go according to plan, because there is a sense of belonging, then that can really accelerate um, transformation without question. Um, and a final little piece here from keydifferences.com, which I just thought was really interesting. Culture is something that helps us to differentiate one society from another. On the other hand, society is a community of people residing in a specific area, sharing common culture over time. Now, if you read on, what this talks about is it talks about fostering a sense of community is something that we can do now. We can do something about it now and we can have a positive effect right now, immediately. Culture is a very different kettle of fish. It very much takes time. We cannot instantly change culture because it's not our gift. It's not within our gift to even think that we can because it will self-evolve itself. So a really, really interesting quote there. As always, before I finish off on my webinar, I always set forth with a few banana skins. And the thing for me is this, when you're working, if you choose to start to think a little bit more about community rather than culture in your narrative, or even in the design and your practice, these are some banana skins. Number one is don't set too many rules. Because as soon as you set in rules, you set in the second banana skin, you second, you, you, there's rigid boundary. And the thing to remember about a community is the door is always open. You don't always get that with culture, with subcultures. You know, I've been part, I, I, I remember being a part of, you know, a wider team and I couldn't become a part of that subculture because the doors were closed because I wasn't one of them. I wasn't allowed in. But there was no spoken word. That subculture wasn't, you know, overtly present within the organization, but people knew about it. So what we want to do is make sure that we don't set rules, that we don't have those rigid boundaries. And also, I think the other thing as well, which is important about community, is that um, we forget to unite on something bigger. Because when we forget to unite on something, best for it to be something bigger than the job that we're doing because that that then can be something that is unite, united by all then we might lose track and that might mean that I'm doing this stuff over here and you're doing this stuff over here so it's really important for us to remember to spend some time to unite on that something bigger and it doesn't have to be for a, a team necessarily directly related perhaps to a strategic vision of the organization it can just be something that the team are uniting on as something bigger as part of something that they care about as a team and that's fine it's enough but it's enough to unite us on something so that's the end of today's session and um you know i guess that kind of question that I'm raising today is how might you start to reposition your own efforts you know if you've got the organizational system around you drumming the bat the, the the you know drumming the drum and banging the drum of culture is there a way that maybe you can start to subtly role model and evidence and manifest and work on community so that any culture that does evolve as a result of your actions has got a better chance of being healthy and wise. <laughs> so uh, really delighted that you can join us today. Thank you so much. And I will be making sure that the replay gets sent to everybody. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to stop pressing the record before we go into...